Jibreerson back with another video of Master 2022 and in this video I will show you how we can actually import a part from Katia V5 and do the machining on Mastercam. So let's get started. So I will simply go to file, click on merge. You can see you just go to your drive wherever you have saved your Katia part but make sure you save it as .stp. You come here, click all files and then you have I saved it as part1.stp go to options make sure you click on edge curves because that will give you the wireframe then you have the part right here <coughs> so I have to align this part according to the machine ability so I'm going to select this go to transform dynamic on the top I'm going to select and make this entire part go underneath the axis itself and click OK right now it's in the middle so right click and clear colors so I have my part right here you can go to the top view and see it's right in the middle that's how I like it and you can also see that there are many different circumstances that now you can go from you can right away go to the machine go for default go for properties file I'm not going to change any parameters here I'm going to let them same default program number it can be any I'm going to select from material this time I've already made a video like what all these options are clear inside retract feed plane and material I, I just go with the standard 6061 that I have been using and uh, yeah I mean next is main is bounding box this is the stock setup I select the entire surface it's going to create a bounding box and for my reference for me it's uh, to make it easier for me to select the depth I'm just going to click on corner points and click OK after that I'm going to leave 20 tau right here on the Z axis and click OK and I can also see on my front view that there is a slide of a material that is left above the axis itself click on isometric so now before I start because I went back and forth from front plane to top plane, plane and isometric plane I need to make sure my construction plane is on the top view as well so from here I can actually start with my tool paths the first one is the facing of course I don't need to select anything I've already specified 20 tau to be the material to be cut I just need to specify the tool and the diameter I go to filter click on none I select the face mill Go to equal and 3 inches itself. Click OK. I have my face mill. I click OK again. I have my face mill. You can select the tool number according to your tool list. You can specify all these parameters that you have. Well, it all depends on the machine that you're using and all other parameters as well. So I'm just going to keep like random numbers that come into my mind. You can always specify and double check the material you are cutting and the parts you are having one way will also work one pass will also work I also told you that one pass only works when you have a particular tool length that is less than the tool diameter itself in this case we have tool diameter of 3 inches which is our face mill and hence we can use it to cut a part that is 2 inches in width which is this part right here so everything else I'm not going to touch stock to leave on floor should be zero because we have already specified the cut depth of cut you can turn it on if you want to if not that's okay as well but I, I will just like that then these parameters are really important as well you need to make sure all of them are good stock 20 tau that's perfect everything else is good while rule of thumb is 100 tau of the stock so it should be 0 0.12 so I'm going to keep that. I'm going to use fuse retract only a start and end. That specifies and saves my time. Rather than retracting back again and again to the clearance, it's just going to use the retract value. And uh, only going to use the clearance either in the beginning and the end operation only. So from here, we can see that it, it becomes pretty obvious. These values come from the standards, but also you need to make sure if you're cutting table and cutting uh, system is free from any kind of obstruction at whatever certain distances 
we definitely want to make sure your clearance height is adjusted in such a way that there is no incoming obstructions on or restriction on your working surfaces there should be no clamps interfering and those kind of parameters so yeah I mean you can select the planes it, they all should be on top plane turn on the coolant MO8 click OK and that's our first operation that is facing and don't forget to save side by side because that's really important because as you go you can see that there are many issues that come with mastercam and it tend to crash really easy so just go and save every operation that's what I personally do so first operation is done so now coming to the next operations either I can go the full depth around and make sure that I have the corners and everything is good or I can simply make sure about certain things before I start that as well and that is the stock itself I'm going to increase the stock setup slightly I'm going to add like quarter of an inch basically one eighth on both sides same thing for the X as well C is ok I'm going to click ok I know my points are going to be changed now but I'm going to still keep it points are just there for the depth surfaces for the Z axis only to specify the depths I'm not going to use points for X and Y so it really doesn't matter if they are with respect to the bounding box or not they just need to be on the same plane that's more important for me So I'm going to click again refresh it it didn't show any error I'm going to save it once again so now I have an idea what I'm looking to cut I'm going to click on contour and I will start with the very end so I'm going to select the loop this it's very handy you can select the loop right here click OK select the tool I'm going for half inch this time go to filter half inch bull will work here yeah. I'm going for half inch bull click OK and the corner radius to be 6, 625 tau I'm not going to change any parameters that, that are going to be consistent everything looks ok depth of cut half of the tool diameter itself tool diameter is half an inch so depth of cut maximum should be quarter no more than that lead in lead out by standard because it's a pretty big part and it doesn't have any weird curvature so I'm just going to keep like 25% 25% on both the ends and with the overlap of 100 tau this is good enough for me to deal with any problem break through I can turn it on because it's the last surface and it doesn't have any other surface or features underneath it so I can just turn on the breakthrough and go like 50 tau deeper and that's my additional value you can also add the break you can turn off the breakthrough and add 50 tau to the cutting depth but it's all up to you you can also add it here I tend to play with all absolute numbers so you see it automatically appears negative 1.5 but uh, I can al always double check and my top stock is now going to be zero because I got rid of that face which was my first operation right here so depth of cut yeah, I'm going to click here that's why I had, I had these points just to verify and make sure that what my depth should be or you can also click on the solid but having points make it easier for you to select them so I have all my parameters pretty good pretty set all are on top plane coolant should be on and you click OK there you go but in this case we are looking to cut outside not inside so you go back to geometry you see the arrow is pointing inwards which means that we are trying to cut the inside of the loop but I want to cut the outside so I'm just going to chain side and you see the arrow comes outside click OK refresh regenerate now we have what we are looking for so we got rid of the face we got rid of the extra material on the sides now we are going to target the inside as well so what I'm going to do is I am going to hide these tool paths for the first one and going on the top view I'm going to offset these couple of lines click on offset I will tell you why I'm doing so I'm just going to keep like half an inch of offset from all the four directions and this is going to make my life easy how? I will give you a reason for that as well I'm going to modify length in order to join them and make sure they all work good 1 inch 1 inch 1 inch 1 inch 1 1 1 
one good enough and I get rid of extra line by divide there we go there we go there we go and there we go so the question is why did I do that the, the answer to that is I simply did it because I have something in my mind and what is that is my using toolpath which is dynamic mill so what it does is it's asking me to choose a machining region which is that I want to machine within a specific boundary which I'm going to choose is the wireframe that I made which is this and click OK and now it's giving me another option to have avoidance region that I want to avoid not cutting it so I don't want to cut this particular feature I'm going to choose this solid and I don't want to cut so now I can click on preview chains and you can see that it's trying to cut this entire surface so the question that you guys might be asking is why did I increase or offset those lines and then made this wireframe the reason is because we are using half inch end mill and if we go for anything other than uh, just using the simple wireframe that we already had of the part itself is this space from the circle to the edge is going to be very small and it's going to end up cutting our solid body in the middle as well that's what we don't want so in order to avoid that I increase the sides so that my half inch tool can easily go from here and here as well without interfering with the cell solid body in the middle so I click OK and then I make sure that my tool is right I have to select half inch flat I go to filter out none click equal 0.5 is good enough I can also use 3.8 if I want to not a problem I'm not going to change the parameters going to keep them consistent stock to leave on wall and floor are going to be zero I zero them out mainly these are only one again half of the tool diameter entry motion you can keep it 0.22 or 0.2 as well no problem Z clearance you don't want to take out 120 uh, 25 thou in one shot you can see the position I go no more than like 50 thou that's good enough and entry feed rate I want to ramp once I reach so 50 is okay breakthrough I don't want it because I have a feature underneath it click on linking parameter all absolute values once again top of stock should be zero good enough depth in this case is going to be right here which is negative one perfect so plane again top 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 coolant should be on and click ok let's see how it looks okay it looks pretty good there's nothing wrong with that it's cutting a lot of material though don't forget to save as you go and yeah like we got rid of the side we also got rid of other surfaces we got rid of maximum material for now only the center is left so what I can do is I can simply copy my second operation and how I do it I just click on second operation control C and make sure this red arrow is underneath all the other operations and control V if the red arrow is above somewhere here then it's just going to copy and paste it underneath the red arrow so make sure this thing is properly aligned so now I can just reach in the last operation that I just copied reach in all and select the inner circle to make that hole specified and I need to play with the parameters a little bit everything else is okay lead in lead out you can even turn it off if you don't want to breakthrough should be turned off because it have a specific depth that we are trying to approach and this is right here negative one that looks okay everything else is good click OK so now if I go to my verify and see how it's going to look like and I see it just shows me an error sometimes initially but it works for the second time always make sure you have your collision turned on and your view loop is good if I play it and see how it goes I'm going to increase the speed once yeah it looks pretty good that's exactly what we are looking for so we have got our final part all shiny smooth just the way we like it so that's how you make your simple master cam parts and thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe my channel for 
upcoming videos like these and also I will be posting more designing and manufacturing videos side by side. So stay tuned. Thank you.